Namaste. Well, my retirement didn't last long, did it? <laughs> but something wonderful has happened. Another jnani has come out of the woodwork <laughs> and made a, a comment introducing himself on our channel. So because of his involvement, his inspiration, I feel I uh, should make a series on the, the Devi Kalotra, which is, well, let me read the introduction by Ramana Maharshi. It really says it better than anybody could. This work is one of the Upagamas. Upa Agama means ultimate instructions and explains the supreme wisdom to be attained by mature souls and their mode of life, expounded by the Supreme Lord Shiva to Devi Parvati, the Supreme Lord in female form. It is the essence of all Agama Shastras. Agama Shastras are scriptures that give instruction on matters of spiritual knowledge. This Devi Kalotra is verily the boat which can rescue the mortals struggling hard, sinking and rising in the sorrowful ocean of samsara, of endless cycles of births and deaths, and take them by the direct path to the shore of liberation. Let all earnest seekers after truth, instead of groping in the dark, bewildered and losing their way, adopt the help of this straight path and reach the supreme state of bliss and peace. So this is, you see, as we've been talking, there are many different levels on the path. So this instruction is meant for the Tivra Adhikari, one who is ripe with wisdom. It's not meant for those who are still struggling with sinful activities and uh, material attachments and ambition and desires and all this stuff. That for them, the path of religion, uh, karma yoga, or love of God, bhakti yoga, is recommended. But for those who have already accumulated enough pious results, and for those whose desire to attain complete self-realization is the, the purpose of their existence, uh, there's this direct path just like in the Buddha's teaching, the path of Zen is there uh, for those who have adequate background in the sutras, the original teachings of the Buddha, and who want to attain the final result now. <laughs> so the warning is, if you're not qualified, don't attempt to jump up to this teaching, you'll just fall down again. But if you want to know what is actually the ultimate in wisdom, or if you have the qualifications by some great good fortune to go by the direct path, then you can become self-realized in a very, very short time by these instructions. So we're going to go through the Devi Kalotra and we're going to also explain the sadhanas based on it. And this is something I have extensive personal experience with. <laughs> so I'll be also uh, giving a lot of background from my own experiences. And this is something that Really, I've been looking forward to doing for a long time, but there was nobody who I could, who uh, could receive it. Uh, 
So uh, I'm very inspired by the appearance of a vacant mind, whoever it is. <laughs> and uh, uh, we're going to go ahead with this. And uh, somehow or other, even though I'm going to be in a very remote place, uh, I'm going to do a series on this book. So let me read the invocation. Meditate in the heart upon Lord Ganesha, the silent, non-dual, universal witness, who is the nectar of divine bliss and is full of grace, shining as the bountiful flowering of aspirants following the path of spiritual wisdom revealed in Devi Kalotra, which was expounded by Lord Ishwara into the ears of Goddess Ishwari. Now, of course, we just went through quite a bit of material on who is Ishwari, who is Devi, who is Parvati. Huh? She is the female form of God. She is the consciousness. He is the being, the pure awareness. So uh, in one place, Ramana explains that Shiva is the feeling of I. And Parvati, Devi, is the feeling of am. So together, I am gives the whole uh, of the Supreme. And when they merge into one, there's no more feeling of you and I. Uh, only pure being, pure awareness, pure bliss. And this is within all of us. This level, this consciousness, this being. It's said God is everything and everywhere. Huh? Omnipresent and omniscient. So this consciousness, this level of being is accessible to everyone, to every sentient being, even animals. And it was proven during Ramana Maharshi's time by a cow, Lakshmi the cow, <laughs> who became self-realized simply by the uh, association with a realized soul. So if one has the karmic qualifications, then this path can lead to uh, self-realization and enlightenment very quickly. It, within a second, it's so immediate. And when I get up in the morning or when I wake up in the morning, I don't get up. <laughs> I stay in bed and I go into this state and I simply relax in it for a long time. That's how I start my day. So we'll explain everything gradually as the work proceeds. So let's read the first shloka. Ishwari said, O Lord of all celestial beings, I yearn to know that path of supreme wisdom and the code of conduct leading to liberation so that all humanity may attain salvation. I request you to enlighten me on them out of your grace. So you see, this is the character of Devi. This is the wonderful compassion of the Universal Mother. She wants all beings to enjoy the same bliss that she does. Huh? She is uh, Mahananda Ishwari. She is the controller of the supreme bliss. That's one of her names. Mahananda Ishwari. So, because she is this the form of this bliss, uh, she goes 
to the essence of that bliss, who is Shiva, and asks him, you please give this instruction to enlighten all of the beings who are struggling, right? Who, who don't get it, <laughs> who have forgotten the actual source, the actual nature of their being. And uh, give them the instruction, the highest level of wisdom, so that those who are complete, those who are uh, tivra or ripe, uh, can meet their real destiny and experience the bliss that is the enlightenment in the self. Now, this happened to me back in 1984. I have been on the uh, uh, Rancho Rajneesh in Oregon for like six months. And, you know, it, it was the same with my Adi Guru. I never had to do anything. <laughs> uh, when I was in my Adi Guru's temples, and I, I really, I never had to do anything there either, which is very surprising to anybody who's been there. Because there were people uh, working 18 hours a day there. So but I had no duty. I was just out there in the desert in a remote ashram and had nothing to do. So I would go to the meditations morning and evening for like six months. And if you've ever done dynamic meditation and kundalini meditation by Osho Rajneesh, you know it's very, very intense. So I was doing these meditations every day, morning and evening, for about six months. And then something happened. Uh, I guess some of the higher ups found out that I wasn't doing anything and they got on my case and they wouldn't let me approach Bhagwan Rajneesh. And so they kicked me out, huh? took my mala. <laughs> it was great. It was a whole big scene. So I got in my, my old 1967 Mercedes <laughs> and drove back to my apartment in Portland. And I had paid the, the rent in advance already. Uh, so I had nothing to do. I had a girlfriend, but you know, I was more interested in just meditation. So I just sat down and then I just sat down. <laughs> there was no plan. There was no method. There was no um, particular type of meditation or anything. I was just sitting, just being. It was wonderful. And over the course of six weeks, spontaneously, all of the transformations of Kundalini Yoga happened to me. And then one day, I had just had a little lunch, I think uh, some noodles or something like that. And after lunch, I was just walking around, you know, getting ready to sit down again. <laughs> and I felt a presence in the room, a female presence, very strong. And I said, hey, this can't be anybody here. The place is locked, you know, <laughs> what's going on? And suddenly I felt a tap on my forehead. And boom, suddenly I could see Brahman, the universal form, how God is everywhere and in everything, and how God is consciousness and bliss. Oh my God, it was amazing. <laughs> it's still amazing. So at that time, I was shown this... Uh, direct path method. And uh, it took me a long time to understand what happened. I went into uh, a whole deep study of devotion, bhakti, and then Buddha's teaching. I became a Buddhist monk. You can look at some of the old videos. You see me as a Buddhist monk uh, talking about different aspects of the Buddha's teaching. And then Slowly, slowly, I came to uh, be a devotee of Devi. 
And so the Sri Vidya is the science, the uh, spiritual science of the goddess. And we've gone over that and so on and so forth. But now we're going to be at the very end of the Vivartavada stage. Huh? The very last actual method before we get into the territory where there is no method, there is no form, there is no uh, particular sadhana. Uh, because everything, all wisdom is there. So this is the Devi Kalotra. This describes this direct path the direct method to enlightenment. It's similar to Zen, but it's in the uh, it's Sanskrit language, and it is the in the context of the Vedas. So enjoy this series. Uh, I'm not going to post every day, but maybe every two or three days. And uh, remember, if, if this is not for you, that's okay. Uh, don't try to jump up artificially, but just know that this level is there. And for those of you who are ready, oh boy, have you got some wonderful uh, bliss ahead of you. Aum Tatsat. Aum Aharihi Aum.